Today, I want to show you something that has historically marked major market turning points, the realized profit and realized loss from an on-chain perspective. So on Bitcoin's blockchain, we can track each user through what's called the UTXO set. We can determine when they first transferred Bitcoin into their wallets and at what price. I personally look at this as a store of value on chain. So we work our jobs, we buy our Bitcoin and we convert our filthy fiat into hard assets such as you know Bitcoin or gold, etc. So when you do buy Bitcoin or transfer Bitcoin at a price of let's say 50,000 to your wallet, that price gets locked in for those coins until you move them again, right? So realize profit and loss asks, let's aggregate all the profits and all the losses through this UTXO set and look at it through either, we can look at it through the overall market, short-term holders or long-term holders, right? Where it gets really interesting in my opinion is, is that Bitcoin holders right now have a cost basis uh, somewhere between seventy to eighty thousand dollars if you look at the true market mean price. So this is the entire market on average, not just the diamond handed holders from from all the way back, right? These are the people who bought mainly into the ETF excitement, the institutional adoption story, uh, the whole treasury company trend that we saw uh, this year and last year, right? So people people have been asking me recently because uh, every day if I think we'll see an alt season or what price Bitcoin could theoretically go to. I personally think we'll, we'll, we will see an alt season, but not in the same way as, as you know, prior cycles. I think some coins will rally heavily, most in fact, by the end of the cycle. That historically marks the top. That's if the four year cycle theory remains intact from which from, from the data I'm looking at, at least there's a majority of indicators that are suggesting, yes, it will remain intact. Someone also asked me what my portfolio is in the comments. They are like, show me your portfolio. I'm currently 70% Bitcoin and 30% ETH. If you look at the first ever video I posted on the channel, and by the way, I, don't, I haven't deleted any of the content I've made. The videos that you see are in the exact order and I made, with which I made them in. Anyways, the video... Uh, when the Ethereum to Bitcoin ratio, which is Ethereum's relative strength about, against Bitcoin, uh, was around 0 0.02, I, I discussed why I was converting a portion of my Bitcoin to Ethereum. And you can look at that video if you want to, but someone asked me what my portfolio was, so I just wanted to mention that. So, so let me break down how this metric actually works. When someone moves their Bitcoin, whether they're selling it, sending it to an exchange, or just moving, moving it to a different wallet address or consolidating UTXOs, that's when we can calculate their realized profit or loss, right? So let's say you bought Bitcoin at 50,000 per coin and you move it to, you move it out of your wallet when Bitcoin's trading at 100K. Your realized profit in that scenario would be $50,000 per Bitcoin. It's pretty straightforward, but what makes this data so powerful? What makes the data so powerful is that you can see this happening across the entire network in real time, right? So this is what uh, this chart shows. We can aggregate that over days, months, years. In this chart, we're showing the daily change in realized or net losses or profits. So in green, we have the realized profits and the daily realized losses are in red. Right now, we're seeing some, some pretty interesting patterns. So on most days, we're seeing way more realized losses or way, sorry, way more realized profits than we are losses, which sort of tells me that people are generally taking profits not really panic selling. It's very this is very healthy in bull markets as we as we've seen in prior cycles, such as 2017, 2021, in all the cycles. In, in prior cycles, when we look at these massive red spikes in realized losses, these often coincide with either the start of the bear market or major market bottoms. And the major profit spikes, those usually happen during near market tops when everyone's feeling pretty euphoric, right? If we look at the amount of realized losses that we've experienced this cycle, it's basically nothing <laughs> this cycle. The bull market has been extremely healthy this time around. Even when we drop from, from around 72K here to 54, some losses were experienced on chain, but not much. Similarly, when we went from 108 to 76, some losses again, but, but not much compared to prior cycles. So this is the, 
the Bitcoin denomination that we're looking at right now. If we look at it through the USD denominated, denominated basis, which you can change to up here if you want to see it, you can note that there are an extremely large amount of realized profits denominated in Bitcoin. Similarly, not enough or not, not a lot of realized losses compared to what we saw in 2021. So uh, now I want to drop, jump into one of my, honestly, my favorite charts on the website, one of my favorite charts. These are the various on-chain price levels that are all basically derived from on-chain data. And each one has a different perspective on how we should theoretically value Bitcoin or to see different uh, aggregate cost basis of uh, different cohorts in the market, whether that might be short-term holders or long-term holders. So let me just show you guys these couple of things right here. Okay, so the, the realized price um, is the first thing I want to talk about. It's the, the one in blue, right? So this is the overall value stored in Bitcoin. This is sort of the true amount of wealth that we can be store that we can see being stored on chain, as we talked about before. The current realized price is actually about uh, fifty four thousand dollars or so. And so in this chart, we're converting market cap to actual price levels so that we can compare their values against uh, the actual USD de uh, denomination of Bitcoin. So the actual price of Bitcoin. Note that in prior cycles, when we go below the realized cap, bottom market market bottoms tend to form, right? This is because a majority of Bitcoin holders are underwater on their position. And also note that when it goes above, when it when the price breaks back above the realized cap, it typically signals that the market bottom has been reached for that bear market. So another way we can look at this is through the lens of different cohorts short-term and long-term holder cohorts. The average short-term holder cost basis, basically anyone who bought Bitcoin in the last 155 days, this shows their cost basis is sitting around uh, 111K right now. That means the average recent buyer is still in profit. And we've actually seen this jump uh, sort of hold support at this level for, for, for a couple of times this entire cycle, but we've actually broken below it a bit, which we haven't really seen much in prior cycles. As you can see in 2017, we actually held above this level for the entire bull market. We only broke below it in 2021 when we hit that big dump down to down from 63K to around 30K. So this market cycle has been a little bit different for the short term holder cost base in that sense. In my opinion, if we drop below this level, we're not just talking about a, a normal price drop, to be honest. So it's good that it, it held support here for, for at least for the past couple of days. When we, when we drop below this level, we're not just talking about a price drop. We're talking about potentially 40 to 50% of recent buyers going underwater. And those aren't seasoned holders who've been through multiple market cycles in Bitcoin. These are newer participants who haven't really experienced a real Bitcoin bear market before. So something to think about. The next chart I want to look at is the supply and profit in loss. So this chart sell, tells a similar story, but from a different angle. It shows out of the total Bitcoins supply, what percentage is either, is either in profit or in loss. And right now the metric is about 91.5% in profit, around 91.5%. 5% in profit and 8.5% uh, loss. So a good percentage of those profits are concentrated in that 70 to 80K cost basis range I was talking about earlier. If Bitcoin tests 80K in the future, and I'm not saying that needs to happen now, we could start to see this metric start to flip over dramatically. And when people go from profit to loss quickly, that's when emotions take over and specifically for short short term holders. When we took, take a look at the lens, uh, the same lens, but through long-term holders, we've basically seen no losses from long-term holders this cycle, except in 2024. So in, you generally don't see long-term holders in loss during the bull market, only in late stage uh, bear markets, early stage bear markets we see, and only during the run-up towards the bull market, we see them start to get out of loss, right? So... A lot of people have been saying the cycle is different. What's different about this cycle 
compared to previous ones, in my opinion, that we can say for certain is that we do have more institutional involvement, more ETF money, more treasury companies, but we also have you know, these participants who bought into, into the story of Bitcoin without necessarily understanding its inherent volatility that it, 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 it does have, right? You can't really argue that. So every bull market has correction phases. This isn't new, right? But what is new is the type of participant we're dealing with this cycle. Previous 30 to 40% corrections were absorbed were absorbed by you know these long-term holders battle tested holders this time we've we have a completely different buyer profile the cycle drawdowns have taken longer to occur what used to be you know 30 percent drops in 2017 in a weekend now take around three to five months in 2024 and 2025 as we've seen to pan out this shows that not just from a price perspective volatility is, is increasing, but also from an on-chain perspective, data backs this up as well. So let me let me sort of talk to you about the different scenarios that I'm watching for in this in this data. All right. So scenario no, number one, support holds. If we see the short-term roller cost basis start to rise again, that would tell us that new money is starting to come in at higher prices. The realized profit and loss data would also show us that continued profit taking is is occurring, but at, at manageable levels, right? Scenario number two, if we drop below this short-term holder cost basis and start to head down, we enter a different world entirely. So this is when realized loss data would start to spike. We'd see people who who are buying, who bought at higher prices starting to capitulate. So of course, there's much more information this cycle, especially now that there's a lot of new data coming out on on-chain markets, especially. There's more information uh, about Bitcoin in general, but people mostly buy to hold. There are, however, people who sell for losses on-chain and the realized profit and loss tells you when that occurs on-chain specifically. Here's the thing about the 70 to 80K price level. So I, I'm developing a new chart on the website called the cost basis heat map. And that's showing that a ton of supply was accumulated at around that 70 to 80K, especially the newer participants. So if we see that drop to 70 to 80K, I'm not saying that should happen soon. I'm, I just expect that to happen in the bear market, to be honest with you. Uh, that, that, that also corresponds, uh, interestingly enough, to MicroStrategy's average cost basis, a lot of ETF cost basis, as well as just in general being below a lot of key on-chain metrics like the short-term polar cost basis, true market mean price, right? And you can see all these levels on the website here. And so, so scenario number three, I think if we do see that, that, that play out, I think we could see a cascading effect wherein if realized losses start to spike and people start to see their portfolios turning red, it at the end of the day it becomes psychological. Fear will spread, more people will start to sell, prices drop further, right? We've seen this in prior cycles, like it's happened, it's happened. So it's a feedback loop. And I don't think this scenario will play out in the next three months. I think this is more likely to happen, uh, say early 2026, mid 2026, and I want to be clear here, I'm not predicting any of this is going to happen. I'm just showing you what the data is uh, telling me, at least. So let's let's jump back into the realized profit and loss data again. When we do start to see a sustained period of massive realized losses, right? These have historically marked major bottoms. When we see sustained market loss, market uh, or sustained massive realized profits in the green, these can typically mark tops, right? You can also look at it through a seven day EMA by going up to the smoothing options here and choosing whichever smoothing you want. And so right now we're in this sort of middle ground where profits are outweighing these losses, but we're not seeing the extreme euphoria profit taking that happens during market cycle tops. Just historically looking at this data, right? You can see it from a USD basis, which is extremely high. 
but on a B BTC denominated basis, it hasn't gotten as high, right? So the question this cycle sort of becomes everything that I've talked about sort of becomes if we do start to test these lower support levels, the question in my mind is, do newer market participants behave like the old days where they capitulate or do they start to behave like long term holders? Do they hold throughout bear markets? Will they not sell their Bitcoin if it goes down 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%? Will they sell or will they hold, right? Here's how I see the different groups positioned right now. So long-term holders are sitting on a major profit. Even at 80K, they're still up huge. They're not the ones who are going to panic. They're not the ones who are going to sell. ETF investors have a different psychological profile as well. They are used to TradFi, traditional markets. They have stop losses. They have risk management protocols. Treasury companies, they some of them are leveraged. They have specific liquidation levels that they have to adhere. And also uh, debt service requirements that they have to adhere to, right? So then we have retail buyers, the new retail buyers this cycle. They are the ones who are most vulnerable to these sentiment shifts, particularly because of that high cost basis that we dis we discussed in the short-term holder cost basis, right? Here's my overall perspective, right? I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen in Bitcoin in the next week, month. Nobody can, but we can try to understand this market that we're operating in. The on-chain data is sort of painting this picture of a market structure that's sort of different from previous cycles. We have more institutional involvement, which brings brings stability in some ways, but also we we see these participants that haven't really been stress tested by a real Bitcoin bear market. And time will only tell what they'll do once or if we get to that re, uh, to that time, if we do. Whether um, we hold at these current levels or we continue higher, or if we test like the lower support levels that I was discussing, it'll, it'll likely depend on multiple factors, right? Not just the on-chain data. It'll likely... Uh, tie into macro regulatory risks, perhaps, or uh, continued or uncontinued re institutional adoption, right? Things beyond just the, the on-chain data. But I, I hope you at least understand these metrics better now. If uh, these certainly show psychology levels for real people who entrust fiat money into Bitcoin. So thanks for watching the video. All the on-chain metrics are 100% free. If you want to dive deeper into these on-chain metrics specifically, you can go here onto the on-chain button and it'll take you all to all these, these uh, metrics here, right? By the way, someone is about to, someone asked me when they're updated. The price only metrics like these, the one year ROI or the price drawdown or the bull market cycle drawdowns, those are updated every hour for all the cryptocurrencies. So all these altcoins for the on-chain data. It's updated every day at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from my other computer upstairs running the Bitcoin node and indexer code that I coded to derive these metrics. So anyways, thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, let me know what your thoughts uh, in the comments are and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Bye.